Well, good evening, everyone, to the Museum at FIT's Fashion Culture Series. We're going to be seeing the wonderful fashion documentary, Unzipped. Uh, not only one of the best fashion document documentaries ever done, but certainly one of the funniest. And to top all that off, right afterwards, we'll be have a brief Q&A surprise with the director, Douglas Key, who's joining us tonight. So the weather outside is frightful, but hopefully tonight it will be delightful seeing this wonderful film. So without any further ado. Well, if you don't know, the gentleman here on stage with me is Douglas Key, the director of this fabulous film. Hello, hello. <laughs> and No, we all, we all know Isaac. What's that? We all know Isaac, and we've known him for a long time. And clearly, you almost, he's like an energizer bunny. You just kind of turn him on. But Douglas, tell us a little bit about you and how you got into filmmaking. Um, I, I sort of fell into it. I was a fashion photographer. I lived in Italy for a while and traveled all over Europe shooting and uh, came to New York and met Isaac. And uh, actually, Isaac was my boyfriend at the time of the film. And so it was just kind of very close to home, in a sense. And, but I didn't make the film because I knew him or because I was with him. I made the film because he was amazing. And it's just hard to find people like that. I mean, there used to be tons of people, I think, in the industry, all those sort of great doyens of fashion who are mostly dead now. Um, the Polly Mellons, the woman, uh, the silver-haired woman who, yes. you know, she says, this erases everything. <laughs> and, um, and I actually spent a couple of years following her around. She was uh, trained by Diana Vreeland, the great fashion icon who ran Vogue. Uh, and, and I followed, uh, she was trained by uh, Diana Vreeland, she worked at Vogue. I think it was when Anna Winter came into Vogue that she yeah. dismissed yeah. Polly. Yeah. Yeah. And then Polly went to Allure and worked under Linda Wells and with Paul Cavaco at Allure, which was, uh, and so I followed Polly a little bit at Vogue, but mostly in, during her time at Allure. Uh, and that's been sitting in my archives. Uh, I'm about to start a documentary series, but I've had a little bit of time to pull out the Polly film, and, uh, and I'm going to start sort of working on that and organizing it. So if there's anyone out there who would like to help me... <laughs> who volunteers, <knows>? interns. <laughs> I, will, uh, I, I would gladly have some volunteers. Sounds great. You know, one of the things that um, Doug and I were talking about earlier is the fact that this production really holds its own. It was amazing when I saw it, all those years ago, I hate to admit, 1994, uh, and it's still today. And I'm wondering, Doug, if you can talk to us why you think it still resonates today and why it still has such energy and, and means something to us. I think that I, I, I love fashion, but I'm, I'm, I always feel like I'm a bit of an outsider, even though I'm sort of in it, but I'm sort of not a fashion person. And I made this movie for people who are kind of not in fashion, even though people in fashion it seems to strike a chord and they love it. But I also wanted, you know, when we screened this movie before, uh, before it was finished, we showed it to truck drivers and <laughs> the dishwasher repairman and anybody who I could get to sit through it to see if it would resonate with everyone because it's a movie about the creative process. You know, I think that's where, like, there's been so many films about designers and I think people are too much into the fashion and not into the person and into the creative process and how they, how they do it, uh, how they think, what inspires them. And you can see that, like Isaac with his movies and Yarnt and all that stuff, which is amazing. So I think, that, I think people watch this film because it's about a person. Since you've been a photographer, do you think that having someone with, with that level of intelligence, I mean, Isaac is a very, very smart person. Um, he would have been, I guess, a Broadway entertainer slash comedian if he hadn't become a fashion designer. Do you think this is something we've lost today? The businesses have gotten so big, there's so much money on the line, and the creative process has really been taken away from designers. Do you think this is one of the reasons why fashion, I think, is a little bit like this in the minds of people? Yeah, I mean, everybody says that. I mean, I interviewed Joe Z. I don't know if you know Joe Z, but he was a, he, he is a personality now. And 
Um, and he, he, was, he was the one who kind of put it succinctly that, you know, fashion is a business now. It's not, it's not the art of like, you know, you, you see it in September issue with Grace Coddington. You know, th those are the days when you slaved over a picture because you loved it and because you believed in it. Um, now it's just business and numbers and, and you know, and, it, and it's just so funny how things have changed. Like, shows like that in those days, people used to everybody used to line up and wait and, and talk to the designer and congratulate the designer because they loved it and because they wanted to say hi. And when you go to shows now, like everybody immediately jumps up and runs to the next show or runs to the next thing. Right. And, right. you know, and you look at the audience there, there's no cell phones, there's no, you know, it's just, it's, there was an immediacy that is sort of lost now, I think. I think one of the things that's nice about this also, and what I felt, Doug, that you captured, because of course Isaac's the star and he's got this energy, but he's great because of the people around him, not just the people who work for him and his mother, of course, his great publicist, um, but the idea that you had models who were hanging around with him. He spent time with them. And I think one of the things that designers say is it's really important is to build the rapport with the person you're making clothes for. Do you think this helped Isaac being able to be around, not just these beautiful, extraordinarily beautiful young women, but also the fact that they were friends and they had this relationship? Yes. Uh, it was a... I don't know. It was a, it was just a time when yeah when when Linda would come up, so some people you know well those girls were busy so a lot of times they'd run out but sometimes they'd they'd stay they'd hang which was really nice but I think though you know I I don't think we quite have that today Linda Christy Naomi Kate Shalom. Cindy. It's funny to see them in this movie because some of them are on their way up and some of them are kind of peaked and yeah. maybe a little yeah. bit on their way down. Yeah. Uh, but I think Isaac talked about those women and loved them and loved dressing them. So, I mean, they were, they had personalities. They were all, you know, I went to, I did a film with Naomi and Kate. We went to Cuba and met, uh, not Cuba, sorry, we did go to Cuba, but we went first to South Africa uh, yeah. to meet Mandela. Um, Naomi was doing right. a fashion show for Mandela, and uh, Naomi was just incredible. She's, she's, she was the hardest worker I've ever met, next to Heidi Klum, probably. Uh, Naomi has a photographic memory. She can remember everything. She can remember the shoe she wore 20 years ago in what picture with, you know, wow. shooting for wow. Italian Vogue. She remembers everything, and she never loses anything, and she goes crazy if she loses something. Wow. All right, now I really hate her. She's absolutely gorgeous, and she's smart, and she's got a good memory, which I don't. <laughs> I think, you know, for the audiences here, uh, you know, when we finish up, we're going to wrap it up fairly quickly, and, and Doug will be here to speak to you all individually. I think, what do you feel is the takeaway today? Because, you know, I've been watching fashion, and, you know, as a curator, being able to look at it from a different angle. What do you feel about it? Do you still feel excited? Do you still feel energy and enthusiastic about I it? I wish I had more money. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a freelancer, so my career is up and down, and when my career is up here, then I can go straight to, uh, I don't know, Rick Owens or Barney's or wherever and right. like get right. my fashion fix. Um, there's nothing better than something beautiful and beautifully made, and that goes way back to the kings and queens, and um, so the whole artisanal part of fashion is just incredible and magical. Right. And if I could say in closing comments, I think the other thing that uh, really comes across in this, and I think all of you got it, is how human it is. You know, we get criticized. Those of us who love fashion are sometimes criticized for being rather frivolous, and we hear it more in America, perhaps, than other countries. But I think you made it human. Yes, there's beauty. Yes, it's a business. Yes, it's glamorous. But there's this humanity that parallels all of it. And I think if I could pay the compliment, that's why it resonated with the truck drivers and the Maytag repairman, uh, is that they saw something of a real person in all of that as well. So. Yeah, it's just like when, what's the movie with Meryl Streep, uh, Prada? Devil, oh, The Devil, Devil Wears, Wears Prada. Prada. You know, she explains it. And, you know, fashion trickles down to every level. And, uh, but that's what gets left behind is art and fashion. That's what we look at when we look back. So, right. uh, you know, it's, uh, it's divine. That's great. Well, again, thank you all for coming out. You know, the weather uh, does hinder some of our energy sometimes, but as you can see, this film was well worth it. And again, Doug is here if you have any comments or questions, or if any of you want to intern, he's taking names. So anyway, thank you so much. All right, thank you.